How you doing guys? Today we're going to talk about strategy and tactics. Alright guys, um, common words thrown out there for um, to, to make a person sound cool, sound tactical, are uh, strategy and tactics. They're different, um, but not a lot of people know how different they are. Now, this is knowledge uh, I'm pulling from uh, U.S. Navy SEALs, specifically Jocko Willink. Um, any one of his books, uh, you will... get more than you paid for 100 percent every time all right uh so my definition of strategy is a goal any type of goal purpose um so if you get up in the morning and your goal is to get ready for work there's your that is a strategy uh what you do to specifically do that, to accomplish that goal, your mission and objective, those are your tactics. Um, so a strategy is a mission objective. What's your mission? A lot of people don't realize that these are, they don't realize it because strategy and tactics are so built into the way we live our lives that we don't see that they're there. Uh, for example, um, your strategy is to go to work, get paid, right? The basic understanding of a strategy uh, as it applies to our daily lives. Every time you get paid is a mission completed. How often do we take for granted the fact that we are a productive member of society and we just like, we just, you know, uh, I changed five guys, five people's uh, oil today. I work at a... Uh, this is not for real. I'm just, as an example, <laughs> as an example, uh, I changed five guys, five people's uh, oil today. Great. How unglamorous. Wonderful. Got my paycheck. I'll do it again tomorrow. Things don't have to be glamorous to be heroic. Um, you, and, and we get, sometimes we even, um, allow the transactional nature of the examples of our daily lives where we, you know, uh, another example, my, my 15 year old son is hungry and I fed him went to McDonald's or Chick-fil-A or some other restaurant. Or, you know, we had food in the refrigerator that allowed us to make our food right then and there. It's really easy, especially here in America, I don't wherever you are, you may be overseas or or uh, across the pond or up north in Canada, down south in Mexico, Venezuela, Peru. Doesn't matter. If you make the if you feel 
as you go through life, like it's transactional, then it's true. And it's your feeling that makes that true. It's how you feel that makes it work in your life. That's perspective. Um, it's easy for us, no matter where you are, uh, for humans to take for granted the things that happen most frequently. Right? If you wake up every morning at the same time, it's easy to take for granted the fact that you wake up. Um, if you always go to the same gas station on the way to work every single day, some people will appreciate that. Some people will love that. Most people will take it for granted. It's part of their autonomic uh, thinking now. So um, the morning that the, rest, the gas station is in the process of being robbed and you walk in like it was like you walked in yesterday, the day before, and the day before that, the day before that, and the day before, hmm, excuse me, and the day before that. But this day, there's a robbery in effect, and you're taken off guard. You're surprised. The the element of surprise has bested you in those moments. Um, we, as a human species, have to guard against the the poison of familiarity. And uh, one way to do that is to think differently about the things we do in our, life, in our daily lives. Kind of got off on a little bit of a tangent, but it works. Here's how. If we think about our daily lives as mission objectives, where we have a purpose and we move towards it, then our lives have more meaning than as we feel it, our lives will have more meaning than so uh, it's it's worth the effort. It's 100% worth the effort to um, add meaning to your life in the form of direction. So uh, when I was first learning the value of goal setting, why is it important for us to set goals like today's task list and, and create a situation that creates a situation where by the time we finish with that task list, we've gotten something accomplished. Oh my God, why do I have to accomplish things every day? Why is that important? Um, it's not. Not in that moment. But after today, tomorrow, next day, next day, week, two weeks, three weeks, months, years. After you build and build and build and you have accomplishment on top of accomplishment, there is no level of depression that can touch you. Become untouchable. Be so strong and so mountainous of strength and presence that daily life, the ups and downs that people would consider to be ups and downs in daily life, don't affect you anymore.
you're not a heartless automat automaton. You're not an android. Stupid robot. I hate using that word. But the things that used to bother you don't because you've got so much built up inside saying I've accomplished this, I've accomplished this, I've accomplished this. And every day that you do it consistently, that's another accomplishment. That by itself, the fact that you've done it, that's another accomplishment. So if you've read any of the books by Jocko Willink, Extreme Ownership, Leadership Strategy and Tactics, The Dichotomy of Leadership, or The uh, Discipline Equals Freedom, um, they're valuable. Uh, there's a Warrior Kid series also, I believe, for, kid, for children to help build, build up um, the young. Um, I, so I suggest all of them. They are, uh, they, they give a different spin. This guy is, um, this guy was in Ramadi, Iraq as a Navy SEAL. And he's had to deal with quite a few things. I won't tell you a story, but it's enough to make a person go, hmm. And he's used what he puts in these books in the today's battlefield. So I study martial art. If you are tuning in, you more, most likely have studied this martial art in some way, shape, form, or fashion. Um, and you know that one of the things we we tout as a uh, as a pride factor is that uh, this art went through two two major stages. Uh, one is the Sengoku uh, period of ancient Japan where in, uh, I, I put the analogy of instead of North versus South that, that this country had to go through, it was Wisconsin against Dakota, North Dakota, South Dakota against Maine, against Virginia, against Georgia, against Alabama, against California, Washington state, every state Every state's governor trying to become the president through war. War was the only method, you know, they, they, it was the method of the day to get accomplishment done, to accomplish anything, to get something done. Um, so it went through that stage where, if you think about it, all of the techniques that a person could do because you can only do so many things with so many so many things with a body, uh, with a body from a body. Like the, the, there's only so much you can do. All the techniques that a person tried on the battlefield of ancient Japan, and that weren't good, that were not useful, or didn't have. If it didn't work, it died. The guy died because it was a life or death situation every single time. So the techniques that came back are golden, right? They rock solid, awesome techniques. Second stage, stage immediately after that, the Edo period, um, where uh, Japan will do a short little history thing where Japan um, started to become a single country as opposed to every state against every other state. Um, uh, it was a period of enforced peace. And so it was still kind of militaristic, still kind of uh, war-based where you either do what we tell you or, uh, oh, look, your head just fell off. Well, anyone else want to have a problem? You know, it's one of those situations where the enforced peace uh, wasn't pleasant, but there was peace. Anyway, during that time, what's a warrior to do to stay, to stay alive? Teach. Um, 
And so that's what they did. And so the second stage of the Arts of the Bujinkan were they've got this body of techniques, a, a body of people that know these techniques that work. And then it became codified. And uh, it became written down, even though uh, ink was very, very expensive. Uh, it was written down. There were scrolls. Um, but uh, in order to write something down, you have to have it well defined. And we can go into philosophical uh, uh, rantings if you want to. When it, you know the, if you write something down, it becomes defined. That is bad because then it can't be anything else. That is good because now it's defined. Like you know, you, you pick your poison. Doesn't matter to me. Um, I'm going to pick the poison I like in the moment I need for it to work. Um, I write lots of notes. And uh, when I go places to learn something, I don't write lots of notes. There's a balance. Always look for it. Um, here we go. Let's take the strategy and tactics, the goal the mission, and then the way we get there. Uh, let's take that to uh, Paleo Man, way back in the day. Way, way back in the day. Stone Age. Hunters need a goal to pursue. Let me rephrase this. That's not what I mean. Since the hunter-gatherer time, we have needed a goal to pursue. Right? It's been survival. We've hunted. That's a strategy. Mission objective. Food. Food for me. Food for child. All right. Gather this different food. Also good. Eat. simple but uh, as simple as it is it's still pretty doggone useful so this is built into us who we are this is a muscle memory this muscle that goes back to uh, millions of generations no matter who you are on this planet we need goals. We need missions. Um, so, let me see, what else do I have here? La, I need my glasses. Hunters need a goal to pursue. Gatherers needed a mission to complete. See goals and missions all around you. They are there. Humans need to ride ambition to a destination worthy of their efforts. So that's part of what I wrote down. Um, we do. The moment you lose ambition, the moment you forget what ambition is all about, is the moment you begin to die. There's an old saying, I think it's uh, Benjamin Franklin. Most people die at 25, but are buried until 75. Thank you, guys. Appreciate you watching. Until next time, get lost and never lose your way.